for 1955 years. Well, I don't know if it went along that long, but it went almost that whole period of time. The churches had uh, pretty well decided that when we are punished for our sins, it's going to be forevermore under the wrath of God, uh, literally billions of years after. Uh, it's going to go on, and uh, it's an enormous, enormous punishment. And as I've indicated many times, that was the club, that was the cudgel that the churches used. It fit perfectly with a do-it-yourself salvation program, because somebody was, uh, you were, uh, someone in the church was talking to somebody and said, do you know, do you know that there is a God who rules, and God has a program, and if we don't become saved, you know what's going to happen to us? We're going to be in hell forevermore. And, and the fires of hell, how horrible they are. Oh, really? Really? Well, then what can I do? And, oh, but we have the program for you. You come to our church and we'll show you how you can become saved. And it starts out maybe with water baptism. It starts out with, I accept the Lord Jesus that, I truly be, believe that he is Christ and that he made payment for my sins and I make confession of faith and so on and so on. And finally, you become a, a, a confessing member of that congregation and the elders and the deacons and the pastor assure you, you are a child of God. You are safe and secure in the arms of Christ. And that is really the basic a, a gospel message of every congregation. It's, there are various uh, differences about it, but it's all essentially that. And it's all based, first of all, on a instilling fear in those who... In fact, I, have, I hear people say, well, now that you teach that, that all we're going to do is die if we, uh, if we don't become saved, I, I, I can live with that because... Uh, uh, that isn't nearly as bad, and uh, and we say, well, wait a minute, that's crazy. That's that we're going down the wrong di uh, direction when we tell people that if you don't become saved, all you do is die, and you never have conscious existence again. But the the problem is that that is the truth, and because God is a merciful God, God is did not create mankind to. Uh, to uh, teach them, uh, to uh, punish them uh, forever and ever and ever. God, uh, God uh, has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. We've talked about this many times, but it's so very important. And as we go through the Bible, we find verse after verse, and I'm just going to give you a couple of them that really stand out, that show that indeed, uh, that indeed uh, God teaches. And, and this is taught repeatedly in the Bible, like Isaiah Chapter 26, verse 14. I'm, uh, a lot of people are acquainted with this now because uh, this is, verse is quoted quite a bit. But in Isaiah 26, 14, God is talking about the unsaved. They are dead. They shall not live. They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Or another passage that is really, really uh, 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 especially helpful, although there are many, many passages that are, but in, uh, in Job, in Job uh, chapter 20, Job chapter 20, we, we read in, uh, in, uh, uh, in verse 5, or verse 4, Knowest thou not this, this is Job chapter 20, of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite for a moment, though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach up unto the sky clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. Now, what, a, what an interesting way of putting it, like your own, uh, like, like manure. It's just going to perish. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. And this is the language of, of, of annihilation, that, you're, you're, that's, that will be the end of you. 
Now, one of the, the sticking points has been the word, word hell, the word hell, because uh, when, when, uh, when we normally think of hell, we think of eternal torment that goes on forever and ever. And remember the rich man in Luke 16, we've, again, this bears re a repetition also, the rich man in Luke 16, remember that he died and was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes and so the hell has to do with being in the grave in the grave but it doesn't even have to do with quite being dead yet because uh, we learned this when we were going through Ezekiel chapter 37 where it talked about the the barriers who were looking around for a bone and then they buried it and and that had to do with uh, people being bound up and uh, prepared for judgment, as we read in Matthew 13, where it says that the, the, the uh, tares will be bound in bundles and prepared for judgment day. Well, now, God uh, speaks about uh, hell in a very interesting way in Second Peter chapter 2, Second Peter Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. And uh, this is a really a revealing verse. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, down to hell, uh, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. They're already in hell. Well, now, wait a minute. How can that be? It means that, that because the, uh, the fallen angels are very active. They were active in the New Testament after Christ went back to heaven. Uh, they were cast out of, he out of heaven, certainly, but they were not destroyed. They were not uh, uh, taken out of the way altogether. And, and uh, we read later on that they also will be cast into the day of judgment. So what does it mean that they were cast into hell? It means the same as it means when God prepares the unsaved during the day of, of uh, the Great Tribulation, prepares them for their entrance into the day of judgment. They are bound. They are, they are locked in to the fact that they are going to be dead and gone forevermore. That is what hell is, is to be gone forever to be gone forevermore. And the typical place that God emphasizes that is the, grave, is the grave. Because when you put a body in the grave, it's a dead body, and then it, re it disappears, as we read in, in Job, and as we read in, uh, in uh, uh, Isaiah. It, it's, it's gone. It